I will consider certain of intention, but in the context of Jones and Locke, which is an 1865 authority that mulls on the important issues as to enforceability. And the question before eventually Lord Cranworth, the Lord Chancellor, was the extent to which a potential gift that a father had made to an infant son was either that, was either a gift or a trust. So to what extent had that father manifested an intention to cause the property to pass over to the son? So the father goes away, um, he was an ironmonger from Pembroke, goes away to Birmingham on business, comes back, goes into the family kitchen where the baby is being attended to by the nurse, the wife is there as well and he, he's berated by the nurse who says you've gone on this business trip and you haven't brought anything back for baby and the father says of course no I've bought him some booties and then he goes on to say look you here I give this to baby for himself and I'm going to put it away for him and will give him a great deal more along with it and what is it what was that well, it was a £900 cheque. Bear in mind we're talking about 1865, so obviously £900 just as now is a significant amount of money. So, to what extent, when the father said, I give this to baby, did he intend to cause the passage of that property from himself as the owner to himself potentially passing it entirely so that the baby becomes the owner or if there's a failure of that gift is there in some way a trust in other words is the father in some way counting himself a trustee when he makes that oral as opposed to written declaration I give this to baby and it is for himself so it goes before Lord Cranworth as I've said who has to mull on these issues and decide whether or not of course there is either a gift or a trust. And the Lord Cranworth, to borrow the language of a later case, Lamb and Eames, a case that makes up another video cast that you'll be able to see on the vital website, um, essentially undertakes an operation which reflects a phrase used in that case, in Lamb and Eames, when he says, or he, he adheres to a, an approach which is echoed in that case where in that case Lamanim said there is no equity in this court to perfect an imperfect gift so there's no equity in this court to perfect an imperfect gift now, what does that mean well essentially it's an attempt to cause testators or gift givers donors to undertake these proprietary dispositions properly, effectively, using the correct documentation and methods. In other words, Lord Cranworth, of course, holds that there was no gift, and indeed there's no trust, there's no equity in this court to perfect an imperfect gift by creating a trust. Why is there no gift? Well, Cranworth mulls, as you'll see when you read the very short judgment, that the key factor or point is that loose, quote, loose conversations of this sort should not lead to these kinds of relationships. In other words, the father was just showing by the passage of that cheque, by holding out the cheque and saying, I give this to baby, what his future intentions were, not what he in fact was doing at that time. Cranworth said he, the father would be surprised if that conversation with the nurse, with the wife, would have led to that kind of proprietary disposition. So Jones and Locke then, 1865, shows us that really you must be adhering to the proper formalities when you're passing property, at least at that stage, that tightening up of the kind of cases that we see in relation to intention on the precatory, imperative arc of treatment that we're addressing across the course of these videos. Okay.